Alrighty. Um, another clip, uh, another video from my projects. Uh, today uh, I will focus on installation of the tile board uh, around the top walls. On the tub, around the regular tub, not in the shower, walk-in shower, but for the tub. It's very similar to installing uh, boards uh, in a shower, walk-in shower, but there are some small differences and uh, many homeowners that are trying to tackle such job asking me uh, what to do in certain sections. So in this clip I will try to explain how to install the board and what it takes to do it, uh, what to keep in mind and what is important, what not to do. So stay tuned and I will show you how uh, it progresses and I will do my best to explain you all the steps involved in installing the tileboard correctly. So, so well, more to come, stay aware, stay tuned. Okie doke, so let me start uh, from a uh, few informations, important information. So uh, one of the things uh, before actually uh, considering remodeling such bathroom uh, with the tub mm, will be recommended to check if, uh, if you have to replace the tub or not. It will be quite a bit of work to uh, put the boards, put the tiles, and I'm assuming you're not uh, really willing to redo it soon. So ensure that the tub is in a good condition. If the tub doesn't have to be leveled, because often older tubs uh, will be out of level. So recommended before actually tile installation will be to level the tub. And um, so please check for that because it's very important uh, to avoid any water dripping here if the tub is uneven or water sitting in the corners if it's sloping in that direction because all of this will cause mold discolorations to the grout and other uh, issues later down the road but if the tub is fine uh, uh, you can definitely move forward with the uh, installation of the tiles and uh, tile board in this particular project we have brand new tub put in I did video and you can see this video on my channel just look for the tub installation and you will uh, see this clip uh, showing how to remove the old tub and how to install the new tub the old one was uh, slightly scratched was all dated discolorated so we've got the new tub in and now we are ready to work on the boards uh, I also replace the valve because valve also mm, pretty much always gets replaced before actually installing tiles mm, and we have a new Moen valve and I also has a video have a video how to install this valve for the tub I have video for the shower and I have the video that actually will show you how to put this tub how to configure the layout and what to do and what uh, what to consider when installing new faucet and the valve so all of this is uh, on my channel but right now let me start from the uh, 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 tile board installation I'm gonna move forward with that so stay tuned and you'll see uh, what it takes okay so um, one of the things to Check first after we have the new tub. What I'm always checking, I'm always checking before installing board, before installing tiles, if the studs on the walls are nicely lining. If uh, the goal is if I put my level against the uh, walls, uh, it nicely lays on each stud. You see, there's no space here, there's no space here no any space on this one uh, and all the way to the end uh, it's not always like that the goal is to avoid I mean you have to check if the level is not bouncing let's say if we have one stud sticking out higher uh, the uh, farther what we have to do we have to make sure to bring this to the same level so what I'm doing to make sure that all the studs are nicely lining because later we're gonna have nice flat surface to tile 
and the tile work will be very uh, easy, very clean looking and you will not have to uh, fight with the tiles to, in order to have them nicely installed. So what I'm doing, um, um, if I have a stud that is actually pushed farther, I have this uh, shaving tool for the wood and I'm uh, shaving the uh, surface of the stud a little bit as much as uh, I have to in order to bring the stud to the correct depth. In cases like here, uh, in this corner, uh, what I did, you can look over here, this stud, the original framing, actually was pushed back more than a quarter of an inch, uh, almost half an inch uh, to the corner, causing the entire corner of the uh, wall be crooked. So what I did, I actually nailed sister stud on the side and this is actually where I'm going to put the screws and attach the board. The board will go farther but uh, the screws will be holding here and it's same same durability. You're not losing any durability not by not screwing in a corner. It's same same thing. If you screw here or here it's going to hold very well but what I did like I said I added additional piece of wood all the way to the top to ensure that everything nicely lays and it's flat. So um, so I already have this checked entirely. I already did all the shaving. I've been shaving this uh, studs and this studs. I've added some block over there on the other side uh, to ensure that we have nice surface before actually putting the board. For the shorter wall I also did the same thing. I don't have a, such short level but what I did I have a nice straight piece of 2x4 and I I've been checking if uh, this one is nicely uh, also laying the way it should. In the same situation on that side, we already have everything checked. Small differences are allowed, uh, but just a small. Um, and uh, uh, yes, so this is one of the th things that I would like to explain. Uh, what happens often, contractors will not really care, they will not check uh, the stars, they will nail the board, what it causes. It causes board to not to be kind of bended, not flat, so uh, what might happen, the uh, board might get separated from the stud over time, or later, tile installation will just look very bad, because later, most of the contractors will just follow the crooked wall, or if you never did such project, if you're doing this for the first time, you will have a hard time figuring out uh, how to actually adjust it so it looks nice, looks perfect. Um, so this is the first thing I'm checking. If everything's fine, uh, the next step I'll show you in just a few seconds. Okay, so another thing, uh, of course, we have to have blocks. Uh, on this side over here, uh, of course, studs being separated uh, by uh, 16 inches, we uh, not always tiling really all the way. So I have the drywall uh, cut out with the edge of the tub and the stud actually appears to be here. So uh, in order to have good uh, transition from the drywall in the bathroom to our tile board, uh, uh, I added a block all the way from the bottom and I will screw the tile board to this block. So I did this on this side and also on the other side there's no block present yet. I left that uh, kind of empty and this is a, a piece of uh, 2x4 that I'm uh, hoping to slide over there and install it. So let me uh, grab that. The space is tight, but I'm not that worried because I know I can make it happen. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do, pretty much... Okay, so the first screw is in place. Um,
put some additional screws of course over there but right now we have a studs that's going to support this tile board and uh, this actually to support the uh, transition between tile board and the drywall so I'm going to put some screws also from that side to keep it nice in place so we have a nice solid corner okay so I'm putting some extra screws I have a longer uh, screws that I'm screwing from the side to make this hold even more just enough to secure this corner piece and this way we have I already did it on, on the bottom we have nice solid corner all right another thing important important thing will be blocks um, I don't know if you've seen my video about uh, installing the board in a shower but if not it's something I would recommend you to also take a look at because there's lots of important uh, and good informations but for the shower for the walk-in shower what we always do on the bottom part we're installing blocks in order for the bottom uh, piece to not have any movement between the studs there's 14 and a half inch a gap so if we put the tile board and even tiles if we put pressure it there will be movement and what it causes causes uh, grout to crack and eventually some other issues to happen and same situation is in the tub when we in the tub and accidentally hit the bottom uh, uh, of the shower uh, wall or put pressure too much pressure uh, the wall you will see that it has very very small movement that will cause uh, grout to separate uh, when it meets the top so I'm always putting blocks uh, when building shower on the bottom row and I'm gonna do same thing for the top so actually here I'm gonna screw the blocks all the way around between the studs and, um, and uh, this way we have very tight fit uh, board, board will nicely hold on the bottom it's going to be screwed up screwed in and uh, it will be extremely durable surface uh, no one really do that I remodeled tons of bathrooms like that and there's always issue with the cracking grout I do not recall seeing any contractor putting those blocks simply because it adds time to the project and no one really cares so I'm trying to make a difference here show you how to do it to have this really really durable so stay tuned and uh, let me start working on those blocks then okay so i'm working on those blocks you can put those blocks uh, before putting the top it probably will be easier to do those before But what I'm doing, I'm cutting this just a little bit bigger than the opening between studs. Then I'm grabbing level to ensure that actually we have this flash with the studs next to it. So you see, it's nice and flat with the studs because this is our goal. And I'm, uh, for the wet areas, I'm always using non-corrosive screws. But there still might be some moisture over time present and the goal is to okay this one is not gonna be that easy screwed from the side okay so now I have the first block So 
So the first block is in place and later the board will be screwed in to the studs and on the bottom here to the block. And I'm gonna do that all the way around uh, this, the tub. So all the blocks already have pre-cut. They will go over here, over here, over here, over here, over here, over there, all the way uh, around the, the tub. So first things, assuming when preparing the walls, make sure all the studs are nice and even and put those blocks. If you want to make it really durable, do that. If not, you can avoid it, but uh, just a tip from me to make it really good. Okie dokie, so um, I have all the blocks in place, as, as you can see, going all the way around. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm putting the level to making sure that everything is uh, nice and flat. Okay, so uh, we have blocks on the bottom. I'm always also putting blocks on the top. Uh, every uh, area where two boards meet, uh, I'm always putting blocks that also reinforces the joint, reinforces the board. So uh, actually, uh, I'm not gonna just put the tape, I'm gonna also put the tape. But uh, additionally, I have a wooden blocks because uh, it works very, very well. And most of the times I'm just using scrap pieces of the wood that we have left over from other cuts. So it doesn't really uh, raises the costs of the job. It just makes this really durable. So I did this here, 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 all the way around. And later, because here we're gonna have one solid piece of board for those side walls. Here we're gonna have a two boards uh, connecting. So where those meets, I will also put blocks between uh, them nicely con do con uh, nice transition nice connections so so this is it but the next step once we have this finished uh, will be to put our first board and the board that I am uh, pretty much always working with is from Georgia Pacific uh, it's a mold moisture resistant tile board and it also has a built-in moisture barrier. What it means, uh, doesn't require any additional moisture barrier to be put in. And uh, I'm uh, one of those people that do not recommend put moisture barriers. The uh, moisture eventually, uh, if we'll get at some point over there, will get trapped and will cause you a mold. It will cause sweating. Uh, so this is what usually happens and in one of my videos I'm explaining this very precisely and I'm showing this on one of my previous jobs as an example what happened when the uh, when previous contractor did moisture barrier so uh, the board that I'm using doesn't require any plastic any type tar paper anything uh, on the backing uh, the only thing that I'm recommending if we working with the cement board because other than this the od only other product that I would recommend to use will be uh, Durac or uh, Permabase or um, There's one more from the custom building products, but uh, Real cement board no hard no uh, Hardy Becker no fiber rack do not use those products. Uh, they, those products are not really well, they're not durable, the, uh, the setting components do not bond to this product as well. I'm explaining this on one of my other videos, so the most recommended will be the board that I'm using or real cement board. Uh, Permabase, Durac and uh, there's one more, I forgot the name, but uh, if you're using cement board, um, on the top of the cement board, uh, I'm always applying waterproofing membrane here. I'm going to do waterproofing as well, but I will show you this a little bit later during this clip. Um, so yeah, so I have a first board ready. This It comes in 5x4 size, so it will nicely fill this space wall to wall, uh, 5 feet. And we, I'm assuming we're going to have a transition somewhere here and then one more piece uh, to be over there. On the sides we have solid pieces, one cut 5 feet tall and the width I will measure 
and same situation on the other side. Um, the way we will be installing it, um, the way I'm doing it, I'm always running board to the lip. I'm never really overlapping the board simply because uh, the lip is not always even and we don't want the board to be bended or uh, the gap appear here between the board and the and the uh, stud so I'm always running uh, as close as I can to the mm, lip of the tab over here and the transition I will fill with a 100% silicone uh, to seal it nicely. I'm also never running board all the way to the top. Uh, you can see some contractors run board on top of the lip, on top of the uh, lip, all and pretty much setting the board on the top of the uh, edge of the top. It's not recommended because uh, what happens over time, water, grout eventually will have small cracks, water will be getting over there a little bit and what will happen this water will actually get in direct contact with the board and no matter what type of board we will use it will be absorbing this moisture this uh, water slightly causing eventually potentially mold to grow or uh, causing discoloration to the grout discoloration to the tiles so I'm not recommending to run board all the way to the top I'm always leaving gap and this is how it's pretty much going to be something like this once I will have the board in place so I'm going to do this on each side that way also important thing before putting the board will be to check the distance that we have over here um, I have a video of uh, when I'm installing this particular tub from the same project and I'm explaining how to set the tub, how to prepare it for the board installation and the goal is to have board actually sticking out farther than the lip over here. Uh, what we're trying to avoid, we're trying to avoid have that board actually being deeper than the lip over here because the tiles has to go on top of the lip if we have a board deep farther you will have difficulties uh, actually uh, installing the tab on top of the lip because of the spacing so the tile work it's, it's doable but the tile work I know it will look not consistent it will be crooked on the bottom in an angle so um, so the goal is to adjust the tab or shim the walls to the point where actually board when installed sits farther than the lip and the edge of the tub. So we have this, uh, the, the tub nicely going against the studs on the back wall. The opening was slightly bigger than five feet uh, side to side. So what I did when installing the tub, I kind of centered it uh, between the spacing and uh, I left some gap, but uh, not as big. So when board will be installed, it will actually pass the it passes the level of the uh, lip, the edge of the lip. So, so this is it. Mm, and well, another thing here, um, what we've got, we've got those screws that actually secures the tub. Those will stay. I'm not going to remove those. And uh, what I will do, I'm going to figure where actually this screws appears to be on the board. And I'm gonna uh, notch the board a little bit where the screw appears to be from the back side to have the board nicely flat sitting on top of the studs. We're trying to avoid just putting the board on top of the uh, on top of the screws or clips, depending what you're using, because later you will, we will have a crooked board. You see the gap. We the goal is to have it like this, not like that. So. I'm going to notch the board from the behind slightly so it doesn't really go on the top of the screws and uh, here I'm going to notch the board you see I have to uh, push the top away from the studs for about a quarter of an inch I have a shim so the board here is going to be slightly notched simply to not sit on top of that if everything's fine if the uh, wall has been framed correctly 
um, this lip actually supposed to go right against the stud. In our case we had to adjust that uh, slightly and this is why I'm telling you about it to not lay the board just like that. Okay let me uh, move forward with the first piece I'm gonna start from the back wall uh, what I will do uh, I will apply liquid nails on the studs on the bottom roll to ensure good bonding and durability and uh, this is something to come in a few moments so stay tuned and you'll see how this part is done all right so um, I'm at the point where I'm slowly getting ready for board I'm checking actually where the four feet appears to be it to be somewhere here so this is how how high I'm gonna apply the uh, adhesive So I'm putting adhesive on the corners and all the studs where we be attaching the board, the bottom roll as well. Yeah, the other type of board that I'm using is a wonder board. So Durac wonder board or uh, Permabase or this. Those are good products to be used. I'm not really into Curdy. Curdy, in my opinion, is a ripping of the customers, the homeowners, because it's pretty much designed for the homeowners that has no really good knowledge about how things can be done. It's expensive and it can be done same well uh, for way less and easier because the curly is it's messy product so I'm not really working with that I had a chance to work with that I've been fixing tons of projects when uh, homeowners uh, watch the video purchase the product and never been able to accomplish the job because it's just too difficult uh, it looks easy but trust me it's not and yeah so so I'm ready to put the first board I have some screws ready once again, no corrosive screws. This is what you have to have on the, on the side. I have the first board. One person should be able to put such underlayment. Let me slowly move forward with this. I'm going to make this a little bit easier for myself. I'm going to put temporarily one screw on the very bottom so the board will not uh, drop to the tub that is going to rest on this screw okay pushing all the way to the corner and slowly pull it back all right now I'm going to check how it fits Okay, it looks like the top is not really straight. <laughs> the board is straight. If you can see the edge of the top actually changes um, on the bottom. It's already sitting on the lip on the sides. We have a quarter of an inch of a gap in the center, but those tubs are not really precisely manufactured. I can fasten this first screw. This one is I'm uh, gonna leave this temporary screw for now. And let me put another one here. Alright, let me secure it here. Uh, and uh, you can do, do the mark 
from the start to make this easier for you. I'm not going to do any marks because at this stage I pretty much know how it goes. And I'm uh, tightening all the all the pieces the board to the, the wood. this process on the entire surface. Keep in mind that the back board always goes first. I would say 99% times. For the standard tub we always putting the back board first and, um, and then doing all the cuts here and sides of the, on the very end. Um, here we have a window so I have to notch the board around the window so I'm going to have a 5 feet the standard width and only the, the one cut later I will notch this with the tool so we have one solid piece of board looks like we have a 12 inches and 3 eighths uh, same situation over here and I'm always cutting the boards a little bit smaller uh, shorter so they nicely fits without any issues without using hammer etc etc Later I will have a fiberglass tape and all the seams will get filled with the waterproofing. So, so yeah, so let me measure this uh, and we will move forward uh, with that in just a moment. Now I'm going to tighten all the screws. Alright, so what I have, Peter got me this uh, cut that we measured for the window. And this is nice fit. Fits pretty good. We already have that. Uh, adhesive on the back. Now I'm going to tighten this nicely. Side cuts. Side. When it comes to board installation, I'm not really saving on the screws. I'm putting every six, eight inches to ensure that it's holding the way it should. So yeah, so I'm going to change the battery and follow up with this and well, we'll get to the side pieces in just a moment. 